you could probably put a few bags of rice in there and off you go. So when I think about my projects, uh, I think of three really big ones. So the one that essentially started my channel that uh, that gave me a really big boost was my 2008 Lamborghini Gallardo Spider that I bought fire damaged on Auto Tempest. And uh, I essentially rebuilt that in my two car garage at home when I had no idea what I was doing and uh, I still don't know what I'm doing. But now I have a shop where I can do more things like this and that, sort of started started it all. So we have my Gallardo, and then my second build was my 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago. So that was the hero car that Tyrese Gibson drove. And I got that in really, really bad shape uh, from the movie studio, essentially. And then I turned that into a SEMA car, and now it's at the Peterson Automotive Museum where everybody can see it, and they can see if there are any flaws. There aren't any. There are that car's flawless. And the third one is my 2016 McLaren 625 LT. And that was crashed in the front and back. And I had to essentially rebuild that car from scratch from the carbon tub. And there are a lot of interesting parallels between all three, but there are big differences between those builds. So the first one was my, my Gallardo. And it was fire damaged, but it wasn't super bad in how the fire happened. So apparently the previous owner was a modifier of sorts. He had a, he had a big speed shop that made really fast cars. So this car was twin turbo. He, he made his own turbo kit and I will not talk about the quality of that turbo kit other than the fact that it was garbage. So that engine was also, it was built by someone that I don't know. It was told to me that it could hold 1600 horsepower and it had a lot of really high end components on it. Like the turbos were really good. The ECU was good. It had a Cyvex standalone engine management unit and it was a gated manual, which Ed Bolian tells me is really rare. I think they only made like 80 of them uh, for the 2008 year or ever. That car was very special to me. It was my first like truly exotic car. I did have an Aston Martin before that, but this was my first kind of big step into the exotic pool. So I started rebuilding that in my garage. I took everything apart, took the engine out. I made sure everything was okay. I redid the fuel system. I redid the turbo system from scratch with the help of a good friend now, uh, Tony, I call him the welding Jedi because he's a, uh, a union pipe fitter and he knew how to weld things very, very well. So uh, I designed the turbo kit and installed it and we spent countless hours in my garage with no AC in the Florida summer heat, uh, just trying to get this thing to work. And it did work. It made a decent amount of power on the dyno. I don't really know what the dyno number is. The dyno was reading low that day. I have lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of excuses uh, of why that power number was low, but the car is very, very fast, but I don't really enjoy driving it all that much. There's an issue with the clutch. The top doesn't really work and a lot of other Italian related things. But that car is running and driving now. Um, I have a new paint job on it. It has good wheels and it looks fantastic. I love looking at it. But as far as a build is concerned, that, that took me about nine months to do. The next one was my biggest one since then. And that was the 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago. And I don't know if you've ever seen a movie car, like up close, if you go to a museum or if you go to uh, just like go to Universal Studios, they have a bunch of movie cars out on display and you can see how bad they are because they don't care about those cars at all. The fact that Universal could buy three actual Lamborghinis for this production. I mean, I think it was like a $200 million budget on that movie. They bought three Lamborghinis knowing that they would probably wreck all three of them. And they took them to Iceland. They ended up painting them essentially in a parking lot in Iceland. They had like 10 or 11 layers of paint on the front fenders because they kept repainting them because of rock chips and stuff like that. They had to remake the front bumpers. This car was put together with wood screws and the doors were ripped off. There was no interior. The car was running like garbage, uh, needed a new clutch, all this stuff. And I bought that car for 80 grand which was a great deal at the time. Uh, and Ed Bullion told me it was a great deal at the time. And then when I saw it, I realized why it was the cheapest one on earth because it needed a ton of work. But I took everything apart on that car. Uh, I mean, short of the engine, we got the engine running really well. Uh, it just needed a good service. Uh, the clutch actually came back to life because uh, it just needed some uh, bleeding of the system. 
And uh, I got new wheels, new tires, a complete restoration of the paint. I mean, we took it down down to the bare metal. Uh, we replaced uh, carbon fiber parts. I had to get actual front and rear bumpers, which were the Veilside uh, Premier 4509 kit that they designed it originally off of. So I got that from Japan um, and that was <laughs> some crazy five figure number. So the car was looking and sounding great and that took me about almost a year to do. And we debuted that at SEMA, uh, the last time SEMA was actually a thing. And everybody liked it. Uh, I was really, really happy. I was proud of everybody that, that did something on that car because, you know, obviously I like to do things myself, but I couldn't do that quality of work, especially with the paint. Like I'm not a paint guy, I'm not a body guy. And I needed a lot of help on this, but uh, got a fab speed exhaust. It, the car sounds insane. It's not great on, on trips. Uh, it'll it'll drone, drone in your ear and um, it will absolutely give you a headache after 20 minutes. But uh, before that 20 minutes is up, Boy, is it, a, is it a good time. That kind of paled in comparison to the McLaren 675LT because that was a complete different thing. Uh, I'm not used to fixing crashed cars. So flood damaged or fire or like, there, there are different tiers to this stuff. So if it's crashed, what happens with a lot of regular cars is if you crash it in one area, it's, the damage isn't localized to that one area it like the energy moves throughout the car. So even if you hit in the back, in the front, you might have a kink or a dent. And you're wondering like where that, where that comes from. It's just because it's, the car is made of metal and then it just travels throughout the car and it, and it warps things. So with the McLaren, it's a good thing and a bad thing because it has a carbon tub, which doesn't uh, stretch or anything, but it just breaks. So mine broke, but I fixed that. And right now, I mean, at the time of making this video, I still have to wait for the body panels to get back from the shop. But this will have been my biggest project yet. And I think, I mean, honestly, if I, if I was ranking all of them, I would say that the Mercy was probably my, my most anxiety inducing because I, I knew that it had to go to shows and I knew that potentially it would go to the Peterson Automotive Museum, which is where it is now. And with the McLaren, I just want that to be a driver. When I put this together, I know that I'm going to have the same anxiety of, am I getting rock chips on this car? Am I parking it too close to somebody else that might dent the car? Like that stuff is gonna come later. But as it stands now, I think the Mercy is my shining beacon of achievement. I'm super, super proud of that. And then everything else is like, you know, under the repertoire of my, of my channel. I think I'm gonna keep doing this for as long as I can because um, cars keep getting uh, crashed or destroyed or neglected. And I'm here to pick up the pieces and then I'll, I'll have a really cool car at the end of the day. So if you're trying to get into like rebuilding these kinds of cars, the kinds of cars that I would personally get are, I mean, the easiest ones are vandalism because they're just take stuff off. Then you can just bolt stuff back on and you'll have a functional car. I would really get a neglected car. Because a neglected car, you could look out and just have essentially a good service for a car and you'll have a functioning automobile. But the ones I would stay away from are the really bad crashes. I mean, you see these on YouTube channels all the time. I found a wrecked, you know, fill in the blank here for next to nothing on Copart and now I'm gonna rebuild it. The problem is a lot of times frames are bent and there's, there's stuff like they can never get aligned properly. They're never gonna drive as well. Uh, if you're dealing with cars that are high end like a Lamborghini or Ferrari, those things are meant for high speed. They're, they're very, very fine tolerances. I mean, I aligned my McLaren myself and it's, it's insane that like you can change one angle here like just very, very slightly and then everything else is off. So it's, there's not a lot of room to work with there. So I wouldn't do like the super crashed ones. Even if you go on eBay and it says it's an easy fix, it's probably not. If it was an easy fix, they would have fixed it. So I would also, flood cars are, are sort of a mixed bag. Sometimes you can get lucky with a flood car. Ed Bullion has gotten lucky twice with a flood car, uh, even though he absolutely cheated in our last car trek. If you have a car in a flood that's a saltwater flood, then all the electronics are probably ruined. But if it's a freshwater flood for not too long, you could probably put a few bags of rice in there and off you go. Uh, or just replace a few modules and check out the wiring. And if it didn't get into the engine and it didn't corrode or anything, actually, even if it did get into the engine and it didn't start, 
you might be okay because the cylinder walls with fresh water, if it's just standing water and you get that out really quickly, you'll be okay. But salt water just corrodes everything. So I, would, I wouldn't do salt water floods. I wouldn't do any major fires, like stuff that would get into uh, multiple compartments of the car. So like if an engine bay fire started and then it went into the interior and then it went to the trunk, like I wouldn't do that because then you have structural issues going. <laughs> Except, except for the fact that I bought Tyler Hoover's Ferrari F355, but that is not, I'm not trying to make that a, like a daily drive or anything. That's going to be a crazy three rotor burnout machine. Those are cars I would generally stay away from, uh, but the cars I would get are, are just vandalized, neglected, maybe a 50% flood, you know, if it was like up to, up to here somewhere. And just make sure that your pocketbook is ready for the worst case scenario because in all of these, there could be a worst case scenario where you need to replace an engine or transmission and you absolutely need to be ready for that. And uh, hopefully your uh, spouse or significant other is also ready for that because uh, yeah, when that, when that bill comes, that's gonna be an interesting conversation for you to have. Patrick Ado Designs is currently having their Voyager sale where they're offering 30% off some of their most popular rings made out of meteorites and stardust and their deep space ceramic ring, their halo ring, and some of their other favorite styles. Now you can still get 15% off anything on their site by using the code VINWIKI, but check them out today at the link in the description below and find your next amazing ring.